Hello everyone, welcome back to Sky Revolutions. Last episode we got resource generation going over here um, by sifting gravel and sand in our um, sifters from Crate. Uh, we have quite a bit of resources. Um, probably enough to take us until we get EMC, which should be not too long from now. Uh, we also made a mob farm so we could get leather from Rotten Flesh um, through Mana Infusion. Um, this episode we're going to be heading over here. We're going to use our first powered um, machines. So we're going to make a metal press, a crusher, and an industrial squeezer. First, we need to, I need to show you that um, we're getting this creosote from um, making coal in the coal coke. Um, and we've actually got quite a bit over here. So anyway, um, let's head over and I'll show you what's going on. So for the most part, I'm not going to show you crafting mechanics we've already seen. Um, because I think that's boring. So I already crafted out what we need for this starting machine. So we need to place, um, for a metal press, we need to place our steel scaffolding there. Okay, I think I got it. So, steel scaffolding, uh, we want conveyor belts, we want our redstone engineering block. Uh, hmm, let's grab some cobble real quick to build with. We're gonna want this here, and then we're going to want this here. We want to hit it with an engineering hammer, which we do have right there. All right, there's our metal press. Now to power it, we need to put power into this top section right here. Um, and we're going to use an alternator from Create. Uh, and I think if I have this right, it's going to make 60 FE a tick. So there should be enough to power stuff right, right now. Um, so we'll take our energy pipe and our, in here we have our pipe wrench. Uh, actually, I, want, I think I want to come out of the top of that. We want to be extracting power from down there. And currently has zero FE. There you go. All right, cool. So we are generating... Oh, these all have storage in them too, I think. Nope, they don't. Okay, but we're generating plenty of power to run this thing. Now, to get it running, um, we need to make a metal press... Um, for the wires, because that's what we need to make our... This is how we're supposed to power things, um, is with a thermoelectric generator. And that needs these LV cables, which need um, these wires, which can be made in the press. So if we want to get this metal press wire mold, we need to get an engineer's workbench with this engineer's blueprint, which is pretty simple. We've all we made all that stuff. So I've made the engineer's workbench. Uh, I have a different blueprint in here right now. So let's go ahead and make the one we need. We're gonna need three of this and we're gonna need three paper uh, this recipe and then we can go ahead and throw this in here cool so now we can put this in here and now to get this we need three steel plates and an engineers wire cutters which I don't think I made off camera do you have any steel plates no all right uh, I hate that that crafting Term, like this crafting terminal does that and it drops it in the inventory. Anyway, let's head over here. Make some steel plates. I feel like that parkour is pretty easy. Um, compared to difficult parkour. I don't know. Like, it's got some challenge to it, but it's not easy. Not, like, crazy easy. Uh, steel. How many do we need? Three? Three. Steel. One, two, three. Throw it on our press here. Okay, and then we can make, oh, we gotta go all the way back over here. And then we can put that in there, and that in there, and we can get our wire mold. Then we can get some copper. Uh, let's get, how many do we need for this? Let's see. We need eight. They make four each. So they basically make, so we need 16 copper. Could be off, but, I mean, we'll probably use the wires anyway. So we can go ahead and right click that there. Drop these here. Um, we can also feed it with a hopper. And I believe... Yeah, the center block is the one you can speed up. Okay, now we can go make these. And yeah, I made way too many of those wires. Oh well. There's our copper coil block, and we don't have 
Constantan plates. We get it here. We need Constantan, which is going to be copper and nickel. Do I have... Did I make some? I think I made some. Yeah. So we can go ahead and make these into plates. And then we can use those plates to make our thermoelectric generator. Now this doesn't actually require anything, like any resource to use. Um, what it requires is that like two sides have something cold, like wa water, and two sides have something hot, like lava. And then the hotter the thing, the like bigger the differential between the hot and the cold, the more power it makes. Um, we're not really going to use this though, I'll be honest. Um, oh, one thing I missed. To make this engineer's workbench. Um, work bench. We need um, treated wood. So to get the treated wood planks, we have this set up here. Um, not that. So here's how we do it. We have a depot with a spout from create. Then we have a fluid pipe extracting from an item, from an item drain. Um, like so. And then we put our basic tank that we have been filling up with creso in those um, coke ovens. You can throw that on there. It'll dump out a bucket's worth. And then we can put some planks. Eight planks to one bucket makes eight creosote planks. And then you can make all this with that. Um, to make the sticks, you make that. Uh, to make this, pretty easy. So that's how you get your treated planks for this. Next up, we want to make this processor binding because that's what's used to make this in, which is like the end of the chapter. And also the beginning of the next chapter when we actually get a storage um, set up, they're going to use a lot of that resource. So uh, let's go back to this chapter. So we want to make our processing binding, which means we need some of this lead wire. The only way that can be made is on this press. So we do have to make a few of this. And then we can combine it with slime balls, which we don't have, but we do have cactus. We want one, two, three, four of that in a mana pool. It's the mana pool with the um, catalyst underneath it. One, two, three, four. And, oh, we're going to have way more of this catalyst than we need for a while. Or this binding. Awesome. Okay. So now to make this, it's going to be glowstone with this, which is going to be this, which is going to be this. Um... Let's actually do, yes, six of that. We don't have, what are we missing? Oh, iron's easy. We just take a few blocks of iron and drop them in our system. Let's get one more to get an even eight. Uh, I moved the lava here because it was hot. Um, but that is still like the fastest way to smelt things, I think. So let's... Grab a, a bucket of lava. Place it there. And we can go ahead and smelt this. Alright, and now I can make this construction core. Alright, and that is one of the two things we need for the end of this quest line. Done. Okay, so now to progress through this um, section, we are going to need a crusher. So to make a crusher, um, well, first off, we need cold coke to go in this crusher, but, well, let's make the crusher first. So to make the crusher, we're going to have to set up this design here. And if I'm honest, this look isn't the easiest way to look at this thing. Um, so if we go here and we make an engineer's manual, uh, which will be nice and easy like this. We can look up Crusher. Why is that? That's huge. Anyway, um, so now we can go layer by layer. So we can stop it. We can go. Um, oh, we want to pause this. What we want to do. And then we can go layer by layer and set it up like that.
Okay, and with a setup like that, you right click there, and there you go. I believe the power can go in uh, on this side here. Nope, it goes on this side. So maybe I should switch this over to be on that side over there. Yeah, I'll be right back. All right, and there we have it. Um, and now we can take our pipes. We can pipe it all the way over into there. So we have the crusher, and now we're going to need a rose quartz, or rose, not rose quartz, rose gold blend, which is going to require us to have um, rose gold, which is in our alloy kiln over there. Three copper and one gold. Let's go head over there. Okay, so we've got some rose gold over here. Um... Unfortunately, I think the only way to crush this is in the crusher. Like, or the pulverizer, which we don't have yet. Um, I believe the end of this chapter unlocks us getting the thermal um, machines. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and head back. And we can go ahead and crush. Do we need this for anything else, actually? Uh, it has EMC, so we should keep one. Um, I don't know. Also, I'm realizing we already had the engineer's panel manual. So we can throw... This one off the edge. Um, anyway. So if we hop up here, we can throw an item in here, and it'll get crushed, and it'll get spat out right there. Or if we put a chest there, we can throw an item in, and it'll automatically go in the chest. So, uh, you can also f put hoppers facing into this, and that will also do the crushing. So, that's an easy way to get this going. Now, to get to use this rose quartz, uh, or rose gold, it's still rose gold, not rose quartz, um, we're going to use it to get Pneumaticraft going. But we need these compressed iron ingots. Now you can do a 20% chance with an explosion. So you drop a bunch of iron on the ground, explode it, and there's a 20% chance that you get each one. Basically each ingot has a 20% chance to get compressed iron. So basically if you throw five iron, you're likely to get one. If you throw five stacks, you'll probably get a stack of iron. Not very efficient. Um, the future option is to get the pressure chamber, which we're actually working toward. And that will turn one iron into one compressed iron. Um, the current way to get it is to do one steel and one HOP graphite ingot, which is what we're going to work on. To get HOP graphite ingots, you need HOP graphite dust, which is eight cold dust or coke dust in the squeezer, which you can crush cold coke, which we made in the previous episode, in a crushing wheel or a crusher. And then we can compress that in an industrial squeezer to make the one HOP graphite dust. So let's get a squeezer going. Alright, so there's our squeezer. Let's get some pipes going over to it. And let's get a chest on it. Alright, so now we want to get um, some cold coke. Luckily, we've got a couple stacks of it over here. Um, another way to get it is to take some coal. Which I have some in here, I believe. If you take coal and you drop it in a mana pool with a blaze mesh underneath it, you get cold coke. Uh, we'll be using this in a couple episodes to make infinite mana and infinite um, HOP graphite. So stay tuned for that. It's coming up. Don't forget to subscribe for that. Now we could use the crusher we just made for this, but I kind of like this mechanism better. Let's go ahead and drop it here. Get launched in there. Gets crushed. And once it's done, it'll come on this conveyor belt into this chest. And there we have it. a stack of coke, um, coke dust. So then we can take that stack over there. And that should give us eight HOP um, graphite dust, I believe, which can be smelted into the HOP graphite ingots. And it uses a lot of power. Um, well, there's one. We might need better power generation for this, actually. 
Interesting. Um, yeah, 60 FE takes not enough. That's fine. We'll take these two right now. Um, let me show you the process for infinite mana real quick. So if you take an HOP graphite dust and throw it in a mana pool with a little bit of mana, it gives you a blacker lotus. The blacker lotus can be thrown into the mana pool and give you a lot of mana. Now, fun fact um, is you can do this. Once you have, um, once I stop burning, once you have a, um, what's it called? Once you have one of these um, conjuration catalysts, you can turn one colon to two for a tiny bit of mana. Uh, you can do this a number of times. Once you have eight of it, you can then go and turn that eight into co coke. Then you can grind that co coke into coke dust, turn it into um, your HOP graphite dust, turn it back into a black lotus, throw that back in a pool, and that is a net, net, net positive of mana. Now, I mean, mana is good, but what can it be used for? Well, if you have a mana flux field, you can sh any time you shoot mana into a mana flux field, it makes energy. Um, so basically, you can have infinite power and infinite mana with this. We're going to figure that out in either next episode or the next episode. Depends on how fast I can get through Britannia. So I think that'll be very interesting, and I want to have it fully automatic so I don't have to worry about it, and I can just have infinite HRP graphite, basically. But for now, that's not what we're working on. We are working on getting into Pneumatograft. So to do that, we want to take our HOP Graphite Dust and smelt it. So if we drop our HOP Graphite Dust in, or ingot in there with the steel ingot. And then we... Well, let's make sure this isn't going to... Yeah. It'll split this out on the belt um, because of how it's set up. I should probably fix that. But first, let's go ahead and... Oh, I don't want to use that. Let's use a plank or slab. Do I have any slabs? Sure. One of these. That doesn't work. Okay. Then we'll just use a plank. And with the plank, we have a heated. It should be mixing. Why is it not mixing? Why are you not connected? Why are you not connected? Oh, right here. Because this is actually our sifting setup that's connected to. And now we have compressed ironing it. Um, so we can make those. And then we're going to make have to make a bunch of them because we have to make um, pressurized tubes and... Reinforce bricks, which is going to be... That's kind of not that bad. Um, so we got to make an air compressor to make air pressure, which Pneumatocraft uses to... Um, uses kind of as, as its fuel source. And then we're going to need to make some... Um, a pressure chamber. So we need some pressure chamber walls, um, some pressure chamber valves, some pressure chamber interfaces, and some pressure chamber glass. So let me just craft all that off camera, now that we've seen how this is done. And I'll come back when we have... Um, all that stuff crafted already. Okay, real quick interjection here. I did set up the thermal electric generator. Um, basically, placing hot fluid on one side and a colder fluid on the op uh, opposing side generates energy based on the difference between the two temperatures, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I have water, which is 300K, uh, which I think is Kelvin, and uranium, which is 2000K. Um, so there's a decent difference between them. I don't have ice or anything, so I can't really use those, I don't think, yet. I don't know what a fine snow block pillar is, but I'm not using that. So right now, this is the simple thing we have. We have our uranium blocks for mechanism, which we got from sifting um, or sieving earlier. Um, so yeah, we're making a little bit of power there because this thing is power hungry. Oh, it's done, but it is power hungry. So anyway, we got a bunch of HOP graphite dust. Let's go smelt it and turn it into um, the thing. I did try to cheese it with um, creepers as an explosion because you can't make TNT in this pack. But the creepers don't actually explode. So, turns out the pack developer was a little bit smart about it and wouldn't didn't allow for us to cheese them. Um, the getting the items. So, oh well, we can smelt these, get them that way, drop them in our um, mixer over there, and then we'll be back when we have a bunch of stuff going. Okay, so let's set up our pressure chamber here. So we're gonna want a floor of these pressure chamber walls. Um, I believe this can be, let's see, does it actually say how much I can be? 3x3, 4x4, or 5x5. Five five. So we're, make, we're making the smallest structure here right now. Um, might make it bigger. We'll have our glass in the front here so we can see it. Uh, actually, one thing. These are directional here. So these um, interfaces let you input and output items. I believe blue is input and orange is output. So we're going to put that there. We're going to put that there. So that we can pump items into here. 
um, basically there's a door here and a door here. So um, it's going to take items in. It's going to close this door. Then it's going to make an airlock and open this door. That way we lose as little um, air pressure as possible when we make this. Um, and the way to get air pressure in is through this thing here. As you can see, that opened up. Um, and then we can take our pipes. And we can take our pipe wrench. We can automatically... Oh, that's not what I want to do. Um, can we rotate with this? No. Can we actually do this with all these blocks? Yes, cool. Alright, If you so apparently if you shift right click these blocks, you can pick them up with the wrench. Um, anyway, we can automatically pull out of there. We'll automatically put it in through there. Um, but first, let's set up our air pumping setup. So we'll set up this here. Uh, that's our output there, so we'll put those here. Um, you know what? We want some safety from explosions here. So we want, uh, I think it's this one here. Uh, let me see. So we need this. So we're going to need... Okay, that's all easy. I'll be right back. Okay, so as it says, the sponger will vent high pressure air if the two pressure reaches 4.9 bar. Um, which is like five bar is when it will explode or can explode. I don't know exactly the, how it works, but if it gets above, um, five bar, there's a chance of it exploding. So this will guarantee that we never, oh, don't want to have it on that side. Um, this will guarantee that we never have, um, it getting too high. If it gets to 4.9 bar, it'll shoot compressed air out until we're back at the appropriate level. Um, one thing we can do, though, is we can accelerate this to give us some power. So we have 0 0.25, 0 0.29, 0 0.3 bar. So we're slowly making it up. And um, so the, what we're trying to do for this thing here, trying to get the machine casing, which needs diamond gears, which needs diamonds. And you know, the way to get diamonds to start is through this. So eight blocks of coal. Figure might as well just do eight at a time right now. And it's going to take four bar. So let's go ahead and throw these in here. Let's go ahead and pull. And we're above four bar, so we can do this diamond recipe once it gets enough coal blocks in there. I think we can, can we access this? Yes. Can we throw things in here? Maybe only when the blue door opens. Is there an animation for the, when the blue door opens? I don't know. There's our first diamond, though. Um. Hello? Hmm. Well, maybe we can't manually put them in there. Either way. There's our first diamond. We need to make a diamond gear. So we need four diamonds. So I'll be back when we have all this done. Okay, as you can see, we're at, well, we're enough bar for it to explode. Um, my bad. Uh, we're gonna have to make another one of those things. But, so apparently if you accelerate things, um, it can make bar before this realizes there's too much and shoots it out. Oh well. Um, there's our diamonds, so we can make one of these. Actually, is there a better way to make diamonds now that we have, once we have those things? Nope, this is going to be the way to make diamonds for a while. Okay, so we have our diamond gear. And to get this machine casing, we need to put that on an aluminum scaffolding. Uh, aluminum, I believe we got from when we were um, sieving still, sieving. Um, but you don't really need much to get these. So let's head over to our deployer over here. And we can deploy things to get our thing, to get the thing, to get the thing. Does that make sense? No, it didn't make any sense. But it made sense, right? Okay, so we're going to put our aluminum scaffold there. We're going to put our diamond gear there. And now we have our machine casing. Then we take our machine casing with at, um, what's it called? Storage. With our construction core. Place this machine casing from refined storage here with the construction core. And we have our machine frame. Which is the end of this chapter. Now, I'm going to check how long this video is. So I kind of want to get into EMC right now. 
Um, yeah, I'll be right back. Okay, so it looks like we have enough time, except for the fact that if we look at the recipe for the Philosopher's Stone, it requires a dragon stone from Batania, which means you have to go through basically all of Batania. Um, not actually all of it, but a good portion. So we're going to spend the next two episodes basically getting through all of Batania um, to make sure that we have that set up. We're basically going to set up uh, infinite mana, which will also be infinite power generation, and uh, all that. And in fact, can I make this yet? Okay, I was hoping I could make the power and herself stuff, because that will make us make it so we can have um, wireless transfer of power. But it does require us to get into power. So that'll probably be in a couple episodes as well. Um, is it actually on this list or is it later on, maybe? No. Hmm. Oh, there it is. So that will probably also be in the episode that we get the MC. Uh, that's unfortunate because we could have transferred power wirelessly from island to island, which we will do. But um, for now, um, we're going to get ready. For, we're going to go and I think the Batania Island will be over there. Um... It'll be a nice big Batania Island, because there is a boss fight that requires a lot of grass and a good open area. So we're going to set up a Batania area over there. And uh, yeah, so next episode, we're going to progress through Batania. Um, and then maybe the next episode will be a quick episode where we just set up the automation to automatically get infinite mana and infinite HOP graphite dust and infinite um, all that stuff. Infinite of certain resources that we can get from our Conjuration Catalyst. Because if we look at this... Uh, we can get, we can duplicate leaves apparently, um, glowstone, which is a decent amount of EMC, uh, netherrack, redstone, snow, quartz, quartz is a better EMC, huh? Did I miss, uh, gravel, coal. Anyway, so we're going to set up that automation, um, in two episodes. So thanks for watching. If you liked the video, hit the like button down below. It really supports the channel. Uh, if you want to see me set up Batania stuff. I'm going to kind of rush through it because I think I'm going to start a Batania series pretty soon here, where it's just vanilla plus mods with um, Batania. So it'll be pretty vanilla with just Batania. Um, so I'm probably going to rush through that. But anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.